Good morning, my loves. Happy Wednesday. Pardon the red nose. I am catching a cold. The temps have been in the 60s and they bounce around right now. And later in the week, they're going to be in the 80s. So yeah, my nose is just, my nose is going to leap off my face and run away from home. So today we are discussing what legacy are you going to leave to this world? I'm not talking college endowment and donations. How will you be remembered? I like to think that I will be remembered helping people, helping people learn to help themselves. I have a granddaughter who's 13. And I think if somebody asked her about Grandma Brenda, she would say she used to be a nurse and now she's a therapist and she helps people, which is true, accurate and concise. And I hope if she ever has kids, that's how they remember me, as a beautiful person who did their best to help other people. That's kind of a nice legacy. I've written a few books trying to help people help themselves, help kids learn that they have a voice and it's okay to feel whatever you feel. You have a right to your opinions and your voice and such. So what, what mark are you leaving on this world? And I'm being serious, don't say, you know, you partied or you were a joker, or you were the clown. I'm being serious. What mark are you leaving on this world? How will you be remembered? My parents were born in the 20s, 1920s, which was 100 years ago. Mom was born in 1923, dad in 24. That doesn't seem possible. That doesn't seem like that's 100 years. It is. And that was a magnificent generation. They had such strong morals and ethics and values that they instilled in their children. You know, good manners was just as important as, you know, the air you breathe. You know, respect was second nature to us. Not fear and intimidation, but respect, admiration, looking up to your parents, admiring who they were, the values that they taught you. That was an important generation. That They were amazing people. My generation, those of us born in the 50s and 60s, were, I like to think of us as the changers. They changed, they, you know, not as, yeah, the peoples in the 50s and 60s changed the world. They changed the views of the world because we witnessed Vietnam. We witnessed the civil rights movement. We witnessed a lot. And the changes my generation made were that truly everybody is equal. It doesn't matter what color skin you have, your ethnicity, you're a person. I mean, you have no control over the color of your skin or the country you're born in or the family you're born in. You are who you are and that's okay. I have dear, wonderful friends that are from all cultures, all ethnicities, I don't know. I, it, they're just, they're, they're family to me. I have a big, beautiful rainbow family, extended family that I cherish. But that is what I like to think my generation, the, the kids born in the 50s and 60s brought to the world. Acceptance and change. They broke the norm. A new norm. So what will your generation's legacy be? Think about that because, you know, I'm six, in my 60s. We have people now in their 60s, 50s and 60s, that are politicians, that are, you know, running governments, running, you know, their governors, their senators and such, and mayors. I have some friends that are mayors and such, you know, on local government issues. And that's wonderful. Judges, I have a lot of friends that are attorneys and judges and lawyers and a doctor, I'm just repeating myself now, I am old, that are doctors and lawyers and judges. And that's wonderful. They're the decision makers. They're doing their best. But what will your generation Just kind of think about that and what, what you're bringing to the table, what legacy you will leave. 
are will you be known for being just a magnificent person in your community? When I lived in the Ozarks many years ago, I was a community leader. I did some really cool projects. You know, I started a holiday assistance program for underprivileged families so that they could have Thanksgiving and then we expanded it to make sure that kids could experience a nice Christmas and have warm clothes. And that was kind of cool. I don't know if, I, if they remember me down there now, but it was a big thing and it was really awesome. I was on the State Independent Living Council to help people who were disabled. And that was awesome. Now I am a board member of the Veterans Ranch, helping veterans, you know, offering equine therapy to veterans and uh, active duty military and families that are dealing with loss and grief and PTSD. It's kind of cool. What are you bringing to the table? What are you going to be remembered for? Think about it. I mean, seriously, give it some thought. It's never too late to change your life, make a difference in someone else's life, get involved, be a mentor, be a community leader, be a leader in your church, your synagogue, your mosque. It's never too late. Go back to school, get a degree, tutor, you know, you can tutor kids. Any number of things you can do if you want to, if you want to leave a legacy, if you want to be remembered as an amazing soul that did a lot of good in this world. And just one more thing I want to touch on, because I thought of this late last night. There are a lot of people in this world who have been bullied and picked on and mistreated their entire lives. And so often, all of that pent up rage and, you know, being rejected and dejected and picked on, it builds up and they want to act out violently. Just if you know someone like that, if I'm talking to somebody like that, if this is you, just kind of listen to me, okay? I understand your hurt and I know your pain. I was bullied. I mean, I, but I turned it, I flipped it. And that's what I want you to do. Growing up, I was super skinny, super pale skin, bright red hair. And, it, you know, I, it was just like having a target on my back. Okay. If you're being bullied, if you're being picked on, that's on the hater. That's on them. I want you to be stronger than the hater. And that's really hard if you're a child, if you're a young person and you're being picked on. If you're being picked on um, online, on social media, get off social media. It's that simple. Yeah. It's that simple. If somebody is harassing you, block them. If it's really bad and they won't leave you alone on social media, get off social media. It's that simple. If it's something happening at school, first of all, talk to your parents. Go to your parents and talk to them. You can go to a teacher. You can go to the administrator. Go to them with your parents. Go to a guidance counselor. Go to whomever and talk to them. If you're being threatened physically, if somebody's encouraging you to hurt yourself, go to the police. Let them know what's going on. Show them the texts. Show them the emails. Show them what's being said on social media so it can be taken care of. But let's be smart. If somebody is texting you and harassing you, block them. And you might have to block them 1,400 times. Block them. If it's on social media, block them. If they keep it up, get off social media. You can live without social media. And then I want you to turn your life around. I don't want you to be a victim. I don't want you to be a martyr. I don't want you to sit in fear. I want you to flip the script. No, I don't want you to pick on them. I want you to prove them wrong. I want you to get the best education that you can, the best life experience that you can, and show them they were wrong. Show them that you are intelligent, educated, articulate. Become a leader. Get the education. Do what it takes to be the best you that you can be. Don't 
just take the anger and the violence out of it. That That's, no, you're better than that. Come on. Mm -mm. Just, we're going to prove them wrong. Okay? They say you're ugly. Well, in their eyes. Honey, ugly comes from the inside out. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside. What what matters is who you are on the inside. You could be the most have the most beautiful face on the planet. Well, congratulations. But what's your heart look like? You know, if you have an ugly heart, an ugly spirit, well, that's going to stick forever. You can have Botox, you can have plastic surgery, you can change your face, but an ugly heart is an ugly heart. And they're going to wear that one for a long time. So be the best you that you can be, okay? Let's make that decision together right now. If you're being bullied, if it's on social media, we're getting off social media. You don't need that crap. If somebody's sucking the life out of you, quit giving them the straw, okay? If we're going to take control, talk to a parent, talk to a teacher, talk to law enforcement seriously, because you are such a blessing to this world, you just don't see it yet. Maybe they see it and it scares the hell out of them. Maybe they know how smart you are and what you bring to the table and that makes them feel small and the only way they can feel big is by picking on you. Something to think about. But let's prove them wrong, okay? Let's dig in, get educated on life, get your degree, get some life experience. You don't have to go to college. I mean, maybe you want to be a landscaper. Fine, get a job in landscaping. Study some botany. Do some online classes. Go work in retail. You can end up owning your own shop. Do any number of things. But we're going to prove them wrong, okay? Because you're a magnificent person, and that will be your legacy. That you rose above the hate and proved everyone wrong. That's beautiful. That's powerful. And I'm proud of you. So think about your legacy and what you're leaving on this world.